Let's say that you would like to have ephemeral environments. More specifically, I will guess that you would like you and people working with you to have environments with all the tools needed to work on something and that environment to be ephemeral. We should be able to create those when needed and destroy them when not in use. That can be, for example, for development purposes. Now, if I ask you, how would you do that? Your solution would probably involve containers in some form or another. You might be spinning Docker containers on your laptop, or you might be using remote environments like GitHub Codespaces or Octeto or Gitpod or any other of the myriad of offerings that are all also based on containers. You might be building your own custom solution and that one is likely also based on containers. How about pipelines like Jenkins, GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, Tekton, Argo Workflows, or whatever you're using to build, test, and do whatever else you're doing with your applications. Those are also ephemeral environments of sorts. They're created for a specific purpose and destroyed when we are finished doing whatever we are doing. Those pipelines are probably based on containers as well. Containers are everywhere, and that's nowhere more true than in ephemeral environments. But what if I tell you that the best way to create and destroy ephemeral environments might not be containers, but a very special operating system? Heresy. I know, Victor is losing his mind. That might be a plausible explanation, but give me a few minutes to show you what I mean before proclaiming me insane. Here's the background story behind the tool I will explore today. I started working on a course related to Crossplane. More info about it is coming soon. For now, what matters is that I wanted to make it as accessible to everyone as possible. More importantly, the course should require uh, quite a few tools installed, yet I did not want to put attendees through the trouble of installing everything required for that course. From the very start, I knew that everyone attending the course would need GUM and Git and GitHub CLI and Kind and Kubectl and YQ and JQ and Teller and AWS Azure or Google CLIs, depending on which hyperscaler one chooses. That's just the start. And as I'm progressing through the course, there will be other tools. Installing all of those can be time consuming, so I wanted to streamline the process and preferably allow people to have all those with a single command. I could not create a script that installs all of those tools since setting it all up would be different on Mac, from Windows, from Linux. To be more precise, I could create different scripts depending on the operating system, but that seems like a waste of my time and a huge maintenance burden. Moreover, I wanted to do it in a way that people can not only get all those easily, but also remove them when they're done going through the course. It would be pretentious of me to assume that all my recommendations are mandatory and uh, permanent additions to everyone's laptops and removing them uh, can be painful. So I don't want people to do that either. Naturally, I started working on container images with the idea that people can just spin up containers based on those images and mount local file system into those containers. But that proved to be problematic for quite a few reasons that I will not go into right now. Eventually, I started searching for a different solution and that was around time I published the video about Dagger, that one. That's when Zigglefingers, one of the people who watched that video, mentioned Nix. And that was it. That was the perfect fit for what I needed. I used it in the past, I liked it, I found it very useful, yet somehow it dropped uh, from my daily workflow and from my radar. Now it's back. It's just what I needed. And today I want to share with you some of the features it offers. We'll make a very quick break to thank Cast.ai for sponsoring this video. Cast.ai is likely one of the best and fastest autoscalers on the market. It works with Kubernetes and apart from normal servers, it also supports GPU nodes. So those working with AI and ML are covered, very well covered. And if you want to save on your bills, it works with spot instances as well. It's a wide reaching automation platform for Kubernetes that automates cost optimization and removes the need for you to manually fiddle with resources. Try it out for free. Now let's get back to the video. This time I'm recording this video from a Virgin computer. It's a Mac without anything related to development. The only exception is Okma ZSH, 
that's the only thing I cannot live without. Whenever I get a new computer, that's always the first thing I install, especially since ZSH is now installed by default on all Macs. Besides of my ZSH, I also installed Nix, which is what we're exploring today. That's it. Apart from Ochmai ZSH and Nix, this computer is virgin. It does not have anything else. It's a great way to demonstrate Nix by pretending that I am one of the attendees of my course. And the first step is to clone the repo. Now, this whole process fails on the very first step. I do not have GH, which is GitHub CLI. Should I install it? Maybe I should. If it turns out, I will be using it often. Otherwise, it will be yet another tool I installed, but I'm not using. It would be a waste that I would probably forget to remove. For now, it would be great if I could get it temporarily. And that's where Nix shell comes in. I will start a new shell, just as I would start Z shell or bash, but this time it will be Nix shell. Apart from starting the shell, I will let it know that the new shell should have GH or GitHub CLI, kubectl and AWS CLIs. And that's it. I started the new shell and before we continue, I will change the prompt so that it does not occupy valuable real estate space in the video. Bear in mind that this is not the first time I'm running Nix on this computer, so it was instant since it used cached packages. In your case, it will probably take a few moments longer since it will need to download those packages the first time. And you will see the download in a few minutes. So let me try to clone the repo again. Remember, I do not have GH, GitHub CLI, on my laptop, on this laptop. This time it worked. I cloned the repo since GH exists in that shell session, which by itself is ephemeral. Once I exit the session, GH will be gone, but cached. As a proof that GH exists in Nix alone and not in the standard shell, I can execute which GH and we can see that it comes from Nix store, which in a simplified version of the explanation can be considered Nix cache. Similarly, we can see that kubectl is available as well. And you need to trust me that I did not install it on my Mac. What is truly great about this way of getting dependencies is that uh, it does not matter whether I am on Mac or Windows or Linux. I don't need to worry whether it should be brew or chocolatey or apt or whatever you're using to install packages. It's Nix package model and it works everywhere. Now, let me continue pretending that I'm going through the tutorial. The next step is to enter the directory of the cloned repository, make a script executable and execute it. That failed as well. That script needs come. Now, if it would be only that one, I could force people to install it, but that's not the only one. The script creates a kind cluster, so kind CLI is a requirement besides Docker. We need kubectl to interact with that cluster, yq to parse YAML, and AWS Azure or Google Cloud CLIs, depending on which hyperscaler one wants to use. One option to provide all those can be to extend Nix shell command I ran earlier with all those other packages, but that is there is a better way. I could have created the script itself based on Nix shell instead of bash. As a matter of fact, I already did that, so let's take a look at it. This is essentially the same script as the one that failed a few moments ago, except for the first three lines. It starts by defining the environment as Nix shell interpreter, just as you would typically define it as bash or sh. Further on, we are telling Nix itself to interpret it as bash. Finally, we are telling it to install packages like gum, kind, kubectl, and so on and so forth. Let's run it by making the script executable and execute it. This time, some packages are not already available in my local cache, so it will take a bit of time until Nix downloads them. Let me fast forward to the end of the package download process and the script worked, even though I do not have any of those tools installed on the host, at least not directly. I will not bother you by showing you what that particular script does. That uh, would be a topic for another video. What matters is that it all works without having to install all the tools required for the script to run. And that's awesome, isn't it? Now, let me stop the script and run it again. The second time, the script started running almost immediately since all the required packages are already cached. Using Nix shell inside scripts is an improvement over running commands like Nix shell packages, followed with the list of all the required packages. It's easier to simply execute the script instead of memorizing a potentially very long command. However, I don't think that creating Nix specific scripts is a good idea since that would assume that everyone has Nix. 
Instead, I prefer writing scripts in a normal way with bash or sh as the shell so that they can be executed by anyone, anywhere, and using Nix as an additional help to get the packages we need. So, I don't want to have Nix shell script, but I also do not want to have commands like Nix shell dash dash packages with a long, long list of packages. Fortunately, there is a way to solve both issues. There is a way to specify which packages we want without making scripts depend on Nix. Let me exit the Nix shell, go back to the crosspoint tutorial repo we cloned earlier, and show you a special file called shell.nix. That file is by convention executed automatically whenever we execute Nix shell. It contains the list of all the packages Nix shell should load by default. It's written in Nix specific language, which in general might require time to learn, but, but fortunately, if all we need is to define packages, it is pretty straightforward and you will probably just copy it, paste it and change the list of packages. Over there, I'm specifying that GAM, GIT, GH and other packages should be installed every time I run Nix shell from that directory. As a result, there is no need for me to list all those packages with the dash dash packages argument. I can simply run Nix shell, wait until dependencies that were not already cached are downloaded, and that's it. Now I will change the prompt to gain some real estate and, for example, execute gum. And it works, even though I don't have it on my host, nor I had to specify it explicitly. Moreover, now I can run the normal script, the one based on sh and not on Nix shell. That's the one that was failing before and now it works. Next, uh, let me stop the script and exit the shell uh, before I show you one more minor but very, very important thing. While I like Nix capability to deal with packages, I do not particularly like Nix shell itself. I, for example, prefer using ZSH with oh my ZSH. It gives me coloring, autocomplete, and other nice features I'm used to. So, the question is whether we can combine the capability of Nix shell to manage packages while still running whichever shell we are used to work in. And the short answer is yes! We can add dash dash run argument and specify which shell should be executed or simply use shell variable to use whichever shell is currently used, which, as I already mentioned, will be ZSH in my case. You can see that the prompt is now different from what Nix shell shows. It's ZSH, which I configure to differ depending on whether I'm running it directly from the host or inside another shell. I won't go into details how I did that. What matters is that now I'm using my favorite shell inside Nix shell. I'm combining best of both. Now, you might be wondering how I knew what are the names of the packages I chose to use. Some of them are easy to guess, like GUM, KIND, and KubeCuttle, since they're named the same as CLIs. Others like Google Cloud SDK instead of GCloud, and AWS CLI 2 instead of AWS can be guessed, more or less. Fortunately, search.nixos.org allows us to easily find any package we might need. I can, for example, search for kubectl, which happens to have the package with the same name, or for gcloud, which happens to have two packages for no good reason, neither of those called gcloud. If in doubt, we can click on the homepage link to confirm whether the package represents what we really need. And there is one more last, probably last thing for now. I mentioned that Nix shell helps us creating ephemeral environments, and that was true, in a way. When we exit the shell, everything is gone except for the cache itself. Cache keeps occupying disk space and if needed, we can get rid of it as well with a single nix store dash dash gc command. And that's it, at least when demo is concerned. Now we can talk about nix. More specifically, let's see what it's good for, uh, whether you should use it and whether whatever else comes to my mind. We'll see. Nix is much more than Nix shell. It is first and foremost a package manager for Linux. There is a Linux distribution called NixOS, a language built specifically for Nix, and quite a few other things. All those are very interesting and I invite you to check them out. However, today I focused on Nix as a way to create ephemeral environments. I showed how it manages ephemeral environments on my laptop. Did it deliver what I need? Oh boy, yes it did. It sure did. As a matter of fact, I feel 
ashamed that I forgot about it and stopped using it. Now I'm back into it and I will be using it on the material for the upcoming course I'm working on as well as a few other projects I'm working on. And if after a while I do not notice any hidden downsides, I will likely use it for all the upcoming projects as well. Now, even though I used it on my laptop, Nix is not limited to it. Another potential use case for Nix are pipelines. Just as it allows me to bring all the packages I need on my laptop, it can do the same in pipelines like Jenkins, GitHub Actions, Tekton, Argo Workflows, or whatever you're using. However, given the ephemeral nature of pipelines themselves, that might not be a very optimal solution. Cache is likely going to disappear between executions of pipeline builds. I think that pre-built container images are a better choice for pipelines. On the other hand, some of you use pipelines with images based on an operating system like Ubuntu in which you download what you need every time a build is executed. In those cases, first of all, you should be ashamed for doing something that silly. But if you continue doing that, Nix is probably a better choice. Still, don't do it. Don't download packages in any form or way, including Nix. Use pre-built container images for pipelines. All in all, Nix Shell is great, and I strongly recommend it for ephemeral environments or laptops and desktops. I'm not sure whether that's just as good of a recommendation for pipelines, though. As for everything else Nix offers, it's up to you to explore it. Or tell me in the comments whether you would like me to create a video about the rest of the features of Nix. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.